Canada's ecosystem is gradually being destroyed by wild emerald ash borers. How did Canadian farmers deal with wild borers? Leave number one and find out with me now. After three and a half months of pregnancy, this wild boar gave birth to eight wild boar cubs. Here is the farmer's farm after about a week. The baby wild boars begin to walk and eat plants around the area. They dig up the plants they like, and they eat insects on the leaves. The pigs then go to the lake shore to drink water and find more food, making the area around the lake heavy, contaminated. Wild boars use their snouts to find larvae and worms under the mud. Wild boar are a concern for Canadians. What did they do to stop their actions? Once farmers determine the number of wild boar herds and know about their activities, their routine is to start preparing traps to catch a series of wild boars. This process requires technique and experience because wild boars are very sensitive and alert to potential dangers. However, this could be a way to control wild boar populations and protect the natural environment from their overcrowding. Impact on how many pigs this trap can trap these are questions that are asked and many people wonder. This trap can hold 10 adult wild boars. Is this trap safe? Of course. Take a look here. These are pigs weighing about 250 to 300 pounds, searching for food at night. In this trap, a lot of grain has been placed, which is an attractive bait for them, as each wild boar enters the trap to enjoy the grain. Other animals in the herd will also continue to come later. It seemed they discovered something, so after a while they felt safe, so they ran away. They continued to enter the trap to eat. After entering the trap, they are very scared and try to break the trap door. Run away when encountering wild boars like this. You should stay away from them, otherwise they will attack you. Trapping wild boars can only partially help prevent the growth of wild boar populations. But the pigs that escaped the trap once again ran away, becoming a formidable one. The challenge is to help wild boars learn how to hide in dense forests and mountains that will be their new refuge. Under the shade of forest trees and bushes, they feel safer and are more difficult to catch directly. Have you ever gone into the forest to hunt wild pigs? After a long time of being hunted by wild boars, the wild boar senses have become very sharp and alert to every hiss of leaves. Changes in the wind or even a distant murmur can agitate them and make them ready to run away. In danger, they will cry out to signal the whole herd, and in the blink of an eye, they can suddenly run away in any direction, even swimming expertly through the water. Hunting wild boars in the mountains becomes quite difficult, especially when they are familiar with the terrain and know how to take advantage of the natural environment to avoid being chased.
This is an exciting and challenging adventure race. Hunters require patience and skill to be able to deal with wild pigs in the wild. In this area, two farmers will go to the observation deck to wait for wild boars. You see this herd of wild boars is quite large. Can you count how many wild boars there are? Please leave the number of wild boars you counted below in the comments section. In a herd, the process of hunting wild boar is an adventurous and challenging task. Requiring patient skills and an understanding of the behavior of wild animal hunters, Note, they often have to use wild tricks like tracks and scent to find the pig's location when close enough. The hunt becomes an exciting race between humans and wild boars. Hunters must have agility and skill in using traditional methods or modern weapons to kill targets quickly and effectively. In terms of immersing yourself in the wild and facing the challenges of the natural environment, it should be noted that wild boar hunting must comply with regulations and laws on environmental and wildlife protection to ensure the sustainability of this activity. A very unique measure is being implemented here to control the growth of the wild boar population. This tiger has been equipped with GPS and released into the forest. Canadian farmers will allow the tiger to attack and hunt wild boars, one of the species that terrify wild boars because of their fast attack speed. Black bears are exactly famous in Canada. They have greater strength than wild boars, so catching and controlling them is also much easier. One brown bear caught a young wild boar in one evening, showing that this measure is effective in preventing the growth of wild boar populations. Do you like this method? If so, leave the number one. Otherwise, if you don't like it, leave the number zero in the comment section. Australia has approximately 300 to 400 invasive animal species spread across Australia. Among them, the most prominent is the dingo dog that was brought to Australia as a hunting animal. However, they later became a serious problem causing damage to Australia's agriculture and natural environment. They have become one of the leading invasive species causing damage to native wildlife, causing ecological imbalance and creating significant costs for governments and farmers to control and mitigate their negative effects. The most important thing is that dingo dogs directly affect the economy and livestock.
Farmers living in Australia told me that dingo dogs cause about $60 million in damage each year to Australian livestock farms, especially sheep farming. The reason they attack sheep is usually due to their hunting instincts and adaptations to their natural habitat. The parts of the dingo dog that affect its hunting behavior are mainly its sharp canines and the ability to move quickly, helping them attack and kill target opponents effectively. In recent years, dingo dogs have caused serious damage to kangaroo populations with their fast running speed and hunting skills. They often take advantage of this ability to chase kangaroos, causing discomfort to the kangaroo population which plays an important role in maintaining ecosystem balance by controlling the growth of plants and species, other plants. Their sudden decline could lead to environmental damage and a decline in food sources for many people. In Australia, reduced kangaroo numbers due to dingo attacks could have a major economic impact on people who rely on this source of income. This increases pressure on measures to control dingoes and protect kangaroo populations. The most effective method to address the economic and environmental damage caused by dingoes is to use hunting to legally manage dingo populations. However, it is important that the use of dingo hunting equipment comply with wildlife rules and regulations to ensure a balance between controlling dingoes and protecting the natural ecosystem. Hunting in Australia is an effective way to control invasive dingo populations, but there can be some conflicting views regarding the ethics and treatment of wildlife. Although dingoes are harmful to agriculture, hunting methods need to be made more humane and civilized. In addition, the use of hunting weapons can affect the environment because cigarette smoke is released directly into the environment, reducing biodiversity. When it comes to controlling dingoes, there is a more interesting method that does not hurt them, which is to use traps to trap them. One of the common traps used to catch dingoes in Australia is the water trap. The 
This type of trap is designed to grip the dingo's legs as they enter, to keep them from escaping. How to set this trap is extremely important to ensure effectiveness in catching dingoes. Users need to find a suitable location that is usually near paths or trails that dingoes often pass. The trap clamps tightly onto their legs, causing damage and holding them. The use of this leg trap can be considered more effective than the use of hunting equipment as it helps to safely capture and control dingoes without having to stun. This also helps minimize the risk of harm to humans and other animals in natural habitats. However, the use of foot traps also needs to be done carefully and in compliance with environmental protection regulations and wildlife laws. Canada geese perform seasonal migrations. The migration cycle begins from their breeding grounds in North America, as they move to their wintering areas in the south in the fall, and return in the spring. They often migrate in large flocks, up to thousands at a time. Herds after traveling long distances, often cover a few hundred miles. In case of severe weather, they can also move to areas with more favorable living conditions. It is their habit to regularly gather in grasslands and swamps, where there are abundant food sources and favorable living conditions. However, their presence on tree bark and leaves can reduce the tree's fertility causing particularly serious impacts not only on young trees but also on mature trees. The negative impact of invasive geese not only affects biodiversity, but also reduces the natural regeneration capacity of the environment. This situation extends to native animals as they compete fiercely for food and shelter. This competition leads to the decline of native animals and creates a series of fluctuations in the ecological structure of the population. With the rapidly growing invasive goose population, millions of people each year are forcing governments to take measures to deal with the population. <laughs> Choosing a hunting location becomes an important part of carrying out these measures in the most effective way.
Large fields with lots of grass and food sources are ideal destinations for flocks of geese. A popular tactic for hunting Canada geese is to use dummies, placing them high up so they can be easily seen from the air. This process usually takes place early in the morning, before the geese begin to appear. Once the hunters have chosen a hunting location, placing the mannequin creates favorable conditions for them to observe the movements of the herd. Before starting the hunting process, the most important thing is to prepare all the necessary tools and skills. The most common handguns are ball bearing, have 12 or 20 gauge barrels, and use Lee bullets, which is a popular choice for this type of gun. Binoculars are used to see from a distance while you hide, helping you hide your location from the attention of geese. Hunting skills are the deciding factor in success or failure, especially when you face long distances. The ability to aim accurately is very important. After shooting, it is important to harvest goose carcasses immediately to ensure meat quality and avoid waste. In compliance with local regulations and with a valid hunting license, marsh goose hunting is a popular activity in the United States. Canada geese are the most popular goose species hunted. Swamp goose hunting is quite similar to field goose hunting. However, it is necessary to choose goose models that can float in the water or be fixed with three branches. Establishing this acquisition model requires setting a time period when implementation remains uncertain. Placing a small goose model in a large area can attract more geese. In swampy areas, you can only hide in areas with large trees or boats to wait for geese to hunt. Hunters need to wait patiently for the geese to arrive, because geese often migrate to the marsh in the early morning or late afternoon. The hunter needs to shoot at the goose in a dangerous situation so that the goose immediately faints and falls. After the goose falls, it can be moved and harvested without affecting the quality of the goose. To be able to control goose populations most effectively, it is necessary to know their behavior. Hunting is an effective means of controlling goose populations. However, Hunting can only control the goose population to a certain extent without the need for other measures.
Rabbit meat farms in the United States are mainly concentrated in warm climates, especially the states of California, Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. The way rabbits are raised on these farms is quite similar to modern chicken farming models, often done in the AE cage system, with the cage floor not covered. No lining is used to cover the rabbit's waistline in the cage, making it easy for them to escape. Rabbit food is very diverse, from green vegetables and fruits to concentrated foods and supplements. Most foods provide vitamins, fiber and minerals, such as corn, wheat and oats, ensuring your rabbit has enough energy. Rabbits have short reproductive cycles, with a gestation period of about 5 to 6 months and a nursing period of about 30 days per litter. Each litter of female rabbits can give birth to 6 to 12 babies depending on nutrition and care. The best temperature for raising rabbits is between 18 and 24 degrees Celsius, as high or low temperatures can affect their health and productivity. The weight of rabbits reaches from 2.5 to 3 kilograms. Approximately 5 kilograms of rabbit meat can be harvested depending on market demand in Europe. France is the largest rabbit farming country in Europe, with a production range of 2 million tons per year. While the United States is the largest rabbit farming country nationally with 1.5 million tons annually, the number of rabbits in each farm depends on the size. From a few hundred to a few thousand, each farm can harvest from 100 to 200 tons of rabbit meat per year with prices ranging from $454 to $681 each time, depending on quality and market demand. Therefore, each rabbit farm can bring in from $1 to $3 million annually. However, there are still many people who do not like this type of meat. First of all, the unique taste of rabbit meat makes many people not choose to eat it. Second, the price of rabbit meat is often higher than other types of meat. Third, rabbit meat is not popular in many grocery stores. Even though rabbit meat is considered a healthy food, high in protein and low in fat and cholesterol. However, its different flavor compared to other popular meats makes it unfamiliar to many people. Regarding enjoying rabbit meat, what do you think? I think you will like it very much. Processing rabbit meat in the United States is a fairly complex process, starting when the rabbit is transported to the meat plant. Rabbits are usually transported by truck or container, ensuring safety during transportation. Before processing begins, rabbits must undergo quality control factors such as weight, age, health, and meat quality being carefully assessed. Processing then continues with the separation of the skin. Rabbit skins are not only discarded, but are also used to make leather goods as display items. Bags containing rabbit offal should not be overlooked. Whether they are removed mechanically or manually, and can be used to produce animal feed or compost. The rabbit meat is then washed with salt water or clean water to ensure hygiene. The next step is to cut off the rabbit's feet for easier packaging and shipping.
Rabbit stew is one of the traditional dishes in America. It is not only delicious, but also brings warmth to cold days. Simply prepared from stewed rabbit meat with vegetables, such as carrots, potatoes, and onions, this dish not only brings delicious flavor, but also retains American tradition. First, wash the rabbit meat and cut it into bite-sized pieces. Carrots, potatoes, onions, garlic and celery are also prepared. Next, marinate the rabbit meat with salt, minced garlic and black pepper for about 30 minutes. Then put the rabbit meat in a pot. Pour water to cover the meat and stew for one hour. Add carrots, potatoes, onions and celery to the pot and continue to simmer for another 30 minutes. After that, you can pour a little red wine and chicken broth into the pot. Boil to taste and stew for another 15 minutes until the rabbit meat and vegetables are soft. Finally, scoop the rabbit stew into a bowl and enjoy while it's still hot. To make the meal more rich and attractive, you can combine stewed rabbit with rice or bread and add other vegetables such as mushrooms or peas.